Hi guys! For those of you who don't know me, I'm Carolina. Welcome to my channel. I am a data engineer and today I will be testing the performance of the 16-inch MacBook Pro for machine learning tasks. For those of you who are trying to decide between the 2020 13-inch MacBook Pro and the 16-inch MacBook Pro, I will compare the performance of both of these models. Ready? Let's get started. A little background to the story. I initially bought the 13-inch MacBook Pro 2020, um, but it turned out that there is a bug in Final Cut Pro on these models. And there is a huge discussion going on. I have a separate video about it, um, and I'm linking the discussion in the description below. And since I was a little pissed at Apple for wasting so much of my time, I decided to go with Dell XPS. However, when the Dell XPS arrived, it's ugliness broke my heart. So here I am with the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which we will be testing today for the machine learning tasks. So is it a good laptop for machine learning? You might be asking. To answer this question, first of all, let's ask ourselves, what are the important components in a laptop for machine learning? And the answer is CPU or GPU and the RAM. If you want your machine learning algorithms to run fast, you need either a good CPU or a good GPU. Both of these are capable of running uh, machine learning algorithms fast, so you preferably need at least one of them to be pretty strong. The 16-inch MacBook Pro has a 6-core CPU, which is quite a good CPU, and a dedicated GPU, which is great. And honestly, I love the speed of calculations but I don't want you to have to trust me, so I want to show you exactly how fast this machine computes machine learning algorithms. So today I've got a CSV file with 1 million rows and 50 columns, and that CSV file I will be passing to the k-means algorithm, which is an unsupervised learning algorithm. And it is a pretty intensive algorithm, so let's see how three of my machines will handle it. First of all, my five-year-old Lenovo laptop, just for comparison. Second of all, the 2020 13-inch MacBook Pro. And third, the 16-inch MacBook Pro. Okay, this is my old Lenovo laptop. As you can see, it takes a lot of time. This is the 13-inch MacBook Pro. And lastly, 16 inch MacBook Pro. Putting my Lenovo laptop aside, let's compare the performance of the 13-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pro. As you can see, the 16-inch MacBook Pro computed that data about seven times faster, if my math's correct. Let's put that into a perspective. So imagine you're running a beast of an algorithm that takes seven days on the 13-inch MacBook Pro to compute. And now the same algorithm on the same data will only take you one day to compute on the 16-inch MacBook Pro. And that, my friend, is what I call an efficiency gain. Okay, second of all, RAM is important as well. If you don't have much RAM, you are very limited because you want to be able to hold a lot of data in memory. Your Jupyter notebooks will simply crash. If your laptop has eight gigabytes of RAM, your upper limit are CSV files that have about two or three gigabytes of data. And trust me when I say it, three gigabytes of data is absolutely nothing. So I highly recommend getting 16 gigabytes of RAM if you can. And this 16 inch MacBook Pro has 16 gigabytes of RAM. Check. And now, plot twist. Guys, you don't need this very expensive machine to run machine learning algorithms. That's the truth. I'll tell you the secret. If you ever get your hands on 
crazy amount of data, massive data sets. You will not be computing the algorithms on your laptop, no matter what laptop you've got. Your laptop will never be as powerful as cloud computing capabilities of Amazon or Google or Microsoft. And you will be computing your algorithms in the cloud. Moreover, most of the companies do that. So if you want to become a machine learning engineer eventually, it will only serve you well to learn how to deploy your algorithms, deploy your projects to the cloud and how to compute your algorithms there. Because that's what employers will eventually expect you to do. So if you already have that on your CV, if you already have some experience with, with doing that, you're ahead of the competition. So that's the truth. But having said that, I would highly recommend for your personal projects, personal development, learning and so on, I would recommend getting at least 16 gigabytes of RAM and a quad core processor. So is 16 inch MacBook Pro good for machine learning? Of course it is good. It is a good machine. It's powerful. It is good for machine learning. Is it an overkill? Possibly yes. Why did I get it? Because on top of machine learning, I also do video editing. And for that, you also need quite a lot of power, especially in terms of GPU. Plus, I love beauty. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you soon. Bye.